give me a happy marriage. That prayer cannot be answered. I'm not cursing anybody. The prayer can only be answered when you have done what you should do. God will not do. You can't ask God in prayer to do what he has already commanded you to do. The moment you understand, you enter into the revelation of ownership. That it is yours. You begin to attract some opportunities. You begin to attract some open doors. That's how it works. So that's why a great man becomes a great man. Because while he was opening gates, he doesn't see himself as a gate man. Hmm? While he was opening gate and saying, yes sir, he knew inside him that the heart is the Lord and the fullness thereof. God told me as I preached this message, he said there are people here who are just petty salary earners in a company. But you will rise up in the same company and join the directors. Yeah. One of my sons here was working somewhere, a bill, multi billion naira company. And one day, Isoga called him and said, You have tried. What we are going to do now is that we're including you as one of the directors. We'll be sharing profit. We'll be paying your wife who doesn't work here because the wife of director should be taken care of. Abby. And where he entered as a steward, where he started from stewardship, he moved into ownership. Somebody is here. You have served and served. You won't die as a servant. Yeah. All my staffs, those who are working with me, I encourage them to own business deliberately. That look, you can be working in church office. You can own things. And they are owning things already. <laughs> it's about what you are thinking. Of. It's about how you are seeing things. Of. Look. After this meeting, you begin to attract it. So you have to, to attract it. You have to enter into the revelation that you, you are a owner. Revelation of what I call ownership. Ownership revelation. He said, for everything belongs to you. Everything. And thou preparest a table before me. Although in the presence of my enemy, but the table belongs to who? Not my enemy. They may be around. They are just not there. Satan does not want this revealed to God's children. So that he can keep God's children in perpetual slavery. Perpetual slavery. Penury. And voicelessness. Satan doesn't want us to have a voice. Oh. Satan does not want you to have a voice. Look, even though it's yours. Satan wants you to be looking for what is already yours. To be running after what is already yours. Do you run after what is yours? No, you attract what is yours. Because of lack of knowledge, lack of understanding, Satan wants you to think you don't own anything. Look, it is not, we're not talking about your bank account now. What I'm preaching to you, someone say, Pastor, you are preaching it because God has helped you. I was preaching this thing as a scutter. I was cutting. Some of you, I told you a few of my stories last Sunday. This place that here didn't grow properly. It is as a result of carrying crates and carrying tangle everywhere I was not born with silver spoon but there is this mentality that entered into me as a result of revelation of God's word that even though as a poor student as a poor person from a, I began to have this ownership mentality that wherever I step the sole of my foot I take it up he told them he was telling slaves that just step there I will give you Slaves who? He said, just dare it. I will give it to you. He didn't tell prince. He told slaves. They were slaves for 430 years. And he told them that as soon as you step there, I'll give it to you. Because or after all, you own it before them. They just, they just kept it for you. I prophesied to someone watching online or live who believed. 
Step into your season of ownership. Enter into the revelation of ownership. It's by revelation. It's not just by hearing. You have to come to the consciousness. The revelation must enter inside your spirit. That even though you don't have one night in your pocket, you are, you, are, you, are already, you are happier than those who have millions in their pocket. That's how it will start. That is how it will. I, did, I was scotting and I was preaching in the house of my scotter. The person who was scotting me was my brother and he, he has about almost 20 of us that are men living with him. He was not married then and he has boys scotter, you know, and I was, and I was scotting, I was among the 20 something children, people, boys living inside his house. And my, the, my language, my behavior, my thinking, my action was totally different. I brought a scotter to scot with me by permission. So that one is a scotter to a scotter. And I used to tell that one, maybe he's watching, I used to tell him, don't follow them. I was the one born after that man that owns the place. I was the, I was the immediate younger brother. All other 19 were behaving like they are the immediate younger brother. I didn't care because that's not what I came for. This man has extra cars. He will drop his key. He doesn't lock his bedroom. When they are going out, they will take his clothes. They will take his shirt. They will take his trousers. They will take his shoe. Me, I was, I was wearing my, my boss corner. And they were wondering that maybe something is wrong with my head. That why can't you enter his room and take a cloth? And I told them that I don't wear people's clothes. The mentality of ownership was so strong. I was preaching one day in a family prayer meeting. The man called me and said, Pastor, I appreciate the word of God you will preach to us. But you see, the people that came around, that one is a multimillionaire. That one lives in the U.S. And the way you were preaching, they cannot help you. Because you don't sound like you need help. He said, I expect you to preach. And don't see all those things you were saying. They will not help you. I say, I don't need their help. It's God that will help me. Today, to the glory of God, I'm the, a pride to all of them. The remaining 19 are still going back to the same house and asking for, Chelebale, do you have a body? You won't die as a slave. It's not pride. I just knew that my condition is not the current condition. That by revelation, I was already in, I already stepped into a season of ownership by revelation. By divine revelation. I pray you will grab that revelation. Amen. You are not saying amen properly. Amen. The day I bought my first Tokumbo car, clean, Jetta, no AC, but clean. I took it to that house where I scotted. So that, you know, so that he can help me pray. And my, and my Abraham, he came out, he said, wow, I'm so proud of you. He said, this is what I want. I don't want people running after me, running after me for the rest of me too, I'm tired. He said, look at you now. After a while again, I took FX45, Infinity. I took it to his house. I said, sir, I just bought this one. He said, hey, you won't die as a slave. You won't die as a beggar. Amen. You are destined to be a giver. You will not die as a beggar. Amen. Look, there are people I'm seeing. You, don't, I don't look at people from their present condition. No. There are big time CEO here. Big time millionaires here. Big time multi millionaires here. They, you can walk in with bedroom slippers. It doesn't matter. But you have to have the revelation. I must say have the revelation. You've got to hand time to that revelation. And that is the revelation Satan does not want us to enter into. Satan wants you to see yourself as a disadvantaged person. He wants to see, to see yourself as a slave. He said, look at you. Ordinary GC, you did not pass. You can't define me by my performance. My performance is not me. Hello? My current performance is not what? 
because it has not yet appeared what I will become. <laughs> I'm still evolving. To judge me while I'm still evolving is, a, is not right. You can't judge me while I'm still evolving. I'm still changing. I'm still being transformed. I'm in a process. So, so to come in the middle and judge me and say, you see, look at you. At your age, you are living in one room, Apollo. At your age, your bank account, your balance is 3,760. They owe you at your age. You can't judge me that way because I'm still evolving. Hello? It has not yet appeared what I will become. But when it appears, I will be like him. So you can't judge me now because I'm evolving. Everybody say I'm evolving. This inner blindness has kept a lot of believers to live a life that is below redemption. It's an inner blindness. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. He said the prince of this world has blinded their mind. Lest they see. This inability to see myself the way God sees me. Is keeping me away from what God has in store for me. That's what he's saying. This inner blindness has kept many believers away from what God has made available for them. So they are, they, are, they are living and they are feeling disadvantaged. They are feeling disadvantaged. The place I said I was living. You know, when you are living under people and they are giving you money, you won't even think of opening a bank account. The moment I moved to Lagos, I opened an account. First bank, a background. It's not a sin. I can sometimes I save 1,000. I work inside and save 1,000 naira. And fill the form. I'm not sure. It's my money. I didn't steal it. And every time I've gone to save small money, the, ca the, the cashier will be looking at me like, ah, <laughs> he's wasting our paper because of 1,000. But you see, I was demonstrating, you see, I was already living in reality. Because I know if I can be walking into bank to save money, nobody will ask you how much I use. I, from the gate, when I walk in, I go inside, I go to where I, to, they save. I pick a paper. I fill the form. I put my 1,000 naira on top of it. I'll go there. And I'll put it like this. So people will bring blocks. They'll be looking at me like, I don't care. I'm evolving. Do you know the same, the same bank, by the time God started blessing my architecture business, they used to call me Bankoli. You know what they call Bankoli? Because at a point, the woman that was heading those who count money, she called me one day. She said, eh, eh, Pastor, what subject can my child master to study your course? The same place I was saving 1000 The woman called me one day. She said, eh, my son, I told him that eh, I want him to study your course. <laughs> Because I kept bringing shaka. It was not my money directly like that, but at least when you start handling people's money, one day you handle your money. I was handling projects, houses for people, and I would carry the thing inside. Ask Pastor Kyle the when you see him. He was my staff. We'll bring the money. You see, that time I love to be there. Even though it's not my money, I love to stay there and let them count, and they'll be counting, and I'll be feeling good. <laughs> and everybody around will be looking at me like, wow, this small boy. I just, I just enjoyed that season. I would, I would have looked for small money. When I'm going, I would just, although they used to be angry that uh, what I was giving them was too small. <laughs> they expected me to bring block. It's not my money. But I don't tell anybody it's not my money. I'll just lodge the money in. Then when we want to buy a roofing sheet, I'll write a check. I start writing check. I will sign. I'll tell my staff, say, we're giving them check. Tell them we're giving them check. Because the money, I want the money to enter my account and carry my name. You, are you getting what I'm saying? Because I had the mentality that I will own things. So I have to practice the thing. End time to the revelation. I say end time to the revelation. As simple as what we just explained is, you have to end time to it. Deliberately. Consciously. Let me show you a scripture. Quickly. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. Jeremiah 29 11. Very popular scripture. If we can have it as the message. Jeremiah 29 11. 
For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace are not evil. To give you a future and a hope. Can we have it in the message? Jeremiah 29, 11, the message. The message. Look at it. This is God's word on the subject. As soon as... Okay, from verse 10. Well, let's read from verse 10. As soon as Babylon's 70 years are up and not a day before, I will show up and take care of you as I promised and bring you back home. I know what I'm doing. God's, God is the one speaking. Say, I know what? I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you. Not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. God said, I can deliver the future you are hoping for. But you see, the problem is you too, you need to know that you have it. You can't attract what you don't know. Are you following me? Despite your current condition, despite what you're going through at the moment, God has a plan for you. It's a plan of prosperity, not of disaster. It doesn't matter where your parenting, your background, God has a plan. Look at English, uh, easy to read version. I say this because I know the plans that I have for you. This message is from the Lord. I have, a, I have good plans for you. I don't plan to hurt you. I plan to give you hope and a good future. 